Welcome to another tech video. Um, today we're going to be having a look at a Wi-Fi 6 access point from Draytech. This is the 960C. So this is the Draytech uh, 960C. This is a Wi-Fi 6 device. Uh, it's a high density unit. So we're going to be having a look at this today. We're going to run through the basics of the setup um, once we get it configured. So inside the box we've got our uh, instruction manual or a quick, quick start guide. It shows you how to connect it up. In here we've got our power adapter. Um, we're not going to be using this because we're going to be powering it via PoE. But um, for the initial setup we are going to use it. And then inside the unit itself, we've got this uh, slick round access point. Nothing special about it. It's fairly slim line, uh, wall or ce ceiling mount. And then inside the box, we've got a template if you want to mount it on a wall. So you, you drill using this template um, and then you can mount it. But also inside here, we've got a full mounting kit so you can mount it to the ceiling. Um, you can mount it to drop down ceilings as well. And then we've got a selection of screws and wall bolts and our network cable. So to start with, we're going to be, as mentioned, we're going to be powering it via um, the power adapter. Um, so we're going to connect the power adapter into the power port. And then we're going to take our, and then we're going to take our network cable. This just plugs into our uh, gigabit switch that we've got, which isn't PoE. I'm going to get that plugged in. Remove the little slot so that it makes it easier to get the cable in. And there we go. Switching the unit on, we should get a little light there, which we do. Dif very difficult to see, but that uh, shows a. a power up light and then once that's connected we're going to then move on and have a look at the configuration okay so the first thing we want to do is we want to see if we can find it on the network so we're going to use IP scan and we're going to do a sweep of the network okay this looks like it here so let's open up 1.26 okay And here we are. So let's go in with the default username and password, which is admin admin. OK, and the configuration that we're going to be choosing is um, we're going to be using it as an access point. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and see if there's any firmware available for it as an upgrade. So this is showing as 142. Okay, and we've got 145 available. So the first thing we're going to do is to download the latest firmware. Once that's downloaded, we can extract the file. Like that. And then we can go off and browse for the file. 960C145. And then we're going to click on upgrade. <clears throat> and then once the device has rebooted, just refresh the page and we can log back in with our normal credentials again. Okay, and there's our firmware updated and we're going to click on next step. And you can now give it a Wi-Fi name. So we're going to call this test and we're going to give it a Wi-Fi password of test12345 exclamation mark. We're not going to be able, enabling a second Wi-Fi SSID at the moment. We're going to click on Next. 
going to change our admin password. <clears throat> so at the moment it's set to admin and admin. Um, you can change that to whatever you want at this point, uh, to whatever you decide that you want to use. Uh, I will do that later. So we'll leave that as admin admin at the moment. And then we're going to click on finish. So what we've done there is we have configured our Wi-Fi access point with one name with an SSID. And you can see here that it's created one Wi-Fi name spread across 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So let's go in and have a look at this from the top down. So under the LAN, this is where you configure whether you want it to have a fixed IP address or be a DHCP client, uh, whether you want to enable a management VLAN. Um, as you can see here, because we're already running a DHCP server, it's detected that and it's disabled the DHCP server that comes on board with this Wi-Fi access point, but you can use that if you want, or you can use it as a relay. Hotspot web portal, so we are not gonna be using this, but this is for things like, you know, confirm the terms and conditions before you join the Wi-Fi type of thing. And again, port control, we're not gonna enable that at all. Uh, whether you're gonna be managing it from a central management server, we're not interested in doing that. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna to come to the 2.4 gigahertz network and just have a look at the configuration in here. And here you can see our test SSID. Now we're not gonna isolate the LAN and we're not gonna isolate the member. So if we tick this box, isolate the member, it means that any client that's joined to that Wi-Fi network will be um, effectively segregated from seeing or accessing anything else on that Wi-Fi network. And the same if you've got multiple LANs or multiple SSIDs as well, you can separate the traffic here. Then we're gonna move on to security and we wanna make sure it's WPA3 or WPA2 personal and that we're using AES encryption only, not TKIP. And again, if you wanted to create additional SSIDs, you've got the ability to do that um, here. And, and this would be coinciding with your SSIDs under the general setup. So if you had four SSIDs here, you can then separate them out by having four different um, um, passphrases. Access control, we're not gonna be using this. So this is a way that you can um, deny or allow clients to join. WPS, um, we're not gonna be using that and it's only works in WPA2 mode. So we're gonna leave that disabled because we don't want people pushing a button and then joining devices. Under the advanced settings, we're gonna leave all of this as default, but we are going to add our country code, which is GB in this instance. And again, here where it says isolate members with IP, we want to set that to disabled. And then isolating the SSIDs. So again, this is a way of separating the SSIDs, but we're going to leave all of that alone because we're only going to be having one SSID on this device. And we're going to click on OK, and that saves it. We're then going to move down to roaming we can leave all that as it is band steering we are going to enable this and what this does this will try and push clients onto the five gigahertz network um, based on the details that you set here so we're going to say okay to that and then going to go to our five gigahertz network and we're going to make sure that it's all the same which it is so it's picked it up so it's set the same ssid across both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks Security, we're not changing any of that because it's got the same passphrase. Access control, we're not using. WPS, we're not using. We're gonna to go to advanced settings. And we're gonna make sure that this is set to disabled. And we're gonna, again, we're gonna add our country code in here. And we're gonna click on okay. Uh, then we're gonna go to roaming, roaming again, we're going to leave that disabled or we're going to leave it as, as it is. And we're going to go back to band steering, make sure that, that is still enabled. We're not going to be using any radius settings. We're not going to be using any object settings. We're not going to be using device groups or applications or Wi-Fi switching on, a, on and off. Mobile device management. So um, we're going to click on this and we've got our 
2.4 gigahertz and our 5 gigahertz network shown here. Now you can um, do some mobile device type of stuff and I'm going to go to the policies so you can automatically block um, mobile devices, PC devices or any other devices there. We're going to leave all of that, we're not going to be doing that. And that's pretty much it. All you need to remember to do is to change your set your password. We're actually going to go into the date and time and we're going to make sure that this is set correctly for the UK. So our time zone is GMT and we're going to change the NTP server pool to be UK dot pool dot ntp dot org and we're going to click on OK. <clears throat> and then we're going to go back up to our dashboard. Now you can name your device. So you, to name your device you click on as it says here in the, the device overview section. So click on the change button. You can then name it. Um, you can and also sw switch off HTTP or force it to HTTPS which is what we're going to be doing. We're going to disable the um, management from the wireless network, so this will stop you from accessing the, uh, the interface to be able to configure it when you're joined to the wireless network. So you need to be on the um, wired LAN to be able to search for it and then jump on it and configure it. We're going to disable the Telnet server. We're going to leave the SSH server enabled and we're going to leave the reset button enabled as well in case we need to reset this. Over on the TLS encryption side, we're going to set that to 1.2 or above um, because 1.1 and 1 are classed as insecure. So we're going to leave it set to 1.2 or above, which takes into account any modern devices, they'll be able to access it. And then we're going to say OK to that and the system will restart. Then after about 30 seconds, just click on the dashboard. We're not ready, it'll, uh, it'll refresh when it's ready. Or you can just remove uh, everything after the um, IP address to try and go back in. Okay, so we're not ready yet. Once it is ready, you'll notice that you're now getting um, an insecure certificate error, and that is because we tick that box that says force it to HTTPS. So we're going to click on advanced and then continue to the device. And again, we can log in using credentials that you had set previously. <clears throat> and there we are. That's all there is to it. It's a nice, simple setup walkthrough of the Wi-Fi 6 Draytech 960C. So if you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I just want to say thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.